Pastor Paige, thank you for letting me come to share. And um, she failed to mention that I was there <laughs> sharing at Share yesterday. But a great group of women, and you guys are learning, growing, networking, and it's awesome. So for all of you that are here today and all you that are watching online, do you still have hope you're going to have a great year? Just please lift your hands, okay? Do you believe that we can still be steady in unsteady times? Do you believe that we can rise above any disappointment? So that's what I'm going to teach on today about how to rise above any disappointment. Father, we thank you for every single person that's watching today, whether on line or in person. We thank you, God, that you're bigger than our challenges. You're bigger than anything we face. We thank you for being here today. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 12 in the Message Bible, unrelenting disappointment leaves you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn your life around. I want you to try that. Say, a sudden good break will turn your life around. Oprah Winfrey was uh, interviewing me, and she says, Tim, I like it when you say that life is not about one big break, but it's about a break after a break and then to a breakthrough. I'm here to tell you today that God's going to give you a break, then he's going to give you another break, and then he's going to give you a breakthrough. And one of the things that's beautiful about a breakthrough, watch, it's not a break sit, it's not a break stand, it's a breakthrough. Is that if you break through, other people can break out. So if you break through, other people can break out. So my father, when he worked at Bethlehem Steel, and my mother worked at Winchell's Donut Shop, they were having challenges in their life, and they were disappointed a lot. The word disappointment means they were upset, they were let down, they had loss, and they had sorrow. But one day, a lady came to my father and said, I'd like you to come to church with us, to a church called Melody Land. It was a famous church in Anaheim. And my father teased and said, I've been to Disneyland. She says, no. It's a church called Melody Land, and he teased, I've been to Disneyland. Well, this man who had been struggling with alcoholism, a lot of confusion in his life, and a lot of decades of challenges, went to this place called Melody Land and received Jesus Christ. He brought all his kids. We received Jesus Christ. He even brought his wife, and later she received Jesus Christ. So his break, and then the family's break, and then another break, that breakthrough became a breakout for millions of people. Because now, a lot of people in our family are out there changing people. So the Bible says unrelenting disappointment. What does unrelenting mean, Tim's story? It means constant. Say constant. Continual. Say unrelieved. Has anybody ever had a dripping faucet that you could actually hear? Lift your hands, please. So one of the things about traveling that uh, is not so great is you can travel to a nice place and even be in a nice hotel and things are dysfunctional. So maybe it's a toilet that will not shut off or maybe it's an air conditioner that rattles or recently I was in a hotel and the faucet just kept dripping. Look, dripping, dripping, dripping. So I got smart. I said, I'm going to put a towel underneath it. And then the more water it absorbed, even the towel started sounding funny, right? Are you with me? So unrelenting disappointment is like something that keeps dripping, constant, continual, unrelieved, where you feel like, you just keep getting let down. It's not that difficult 
if you get let down once or twice, but when you keep getting disappointed time after time after time, you start to wonder. But the Bible says unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. The word sick means ill, fading, ailing, and out of sorts. Some say out of sorts. So watch how powerful this is today. It's amazing how God many times calls us to an upward calling in a downward moment. What I'm trying to say to you is some of you are going through a season of silence. You're going through challenges, disappointments, delays, and even denials. But in the midst of that, God can come and visit you even when you're feeling sick in the center. Somebody say, this is good. Sick means, again, ill, fading, ailing, out of sorts. In fact, most people in the Bible that God called to do big things, he called them when they were in a place of disappointment. In Exodus chapter 2, verse 11 it was a man by the name of Moses, and he was out there with his people, and he saw this man fighting with somebody from his group, and he hit this man, and he killed him. And the Bible says, and he hit him in the sand. So Moses did something he shouldn't do, and he got found out. And so now Pharaoh, the head of this group, started chasing down Moses, and Moses began to run. He was wondering and wandering. Somebody say wondering and wandering. So here's a guy by the name of Moses that was called to do great things, that was called to guide his people, say guide. Guard his people, say guard. Govern his people, say govern. He was called to do great things, but yet he finds himself wandering and wandering. But he's wandering and wandering for 40 years. But unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. So now Moses is sick in the center for 40 years. I beg you to hear me. Some of you, you got divorced. Divorce means divided force. So you had force as a couple, but then you get divorce means divided force. Force. It can cause you to get sick in the center. But divorce is not just in marriage. It can be between siblings who don't talk anymore. Somebody say good teaching. It could be somebody fires you from your job. Divorce. Divided force. So Moses is connected to his calling. And now... He gets divorced from his calling. He now has divided force. And when you have divided force, sometimes you're left, sometimes you're right, and all of a sudden you are walking in a place of confusion. Who's ever been there at least one time? So Moses is living not just in a moment of disappointment, he's leaving in a season of disappointment. And if he's not careful, he's going to create a lifestyle of being disappointed. So there are so many people that we know that are living a lifestyle of disappointment. I have, a, I have an uncle that's now passed away. And he was fired from his job when he was about 50 years of age. But he was still mad at the people that fired him when he was 60. And he was still uh, uh, mad at the people uh, who fired him when he was 65. And he was still mad at the people that fired him when he was 70. In fact, he never got over the fact that he was fired when he was 50. He lived in a season of disappointment. But unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. The heart is the center of everything that you are. Joy comes from your heart. Peace comes from your heart. And faith comes from your heart. I believe that the enemy has tried to make some of us sick in the center. Because it's out of the center that you have faith to get out of debt. 
faith to start a new business, faith to do something wonderful, faith to take over. Somebody clap your hands and shout real big. <laughs> Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. But, say but. You just said but in church. I can't believe that. <laughs> but a sudden good break. Say a sudden good break. The word sudden, listen what this means. Something occurring quickly. Something happening unexpectedly. Something happening without warning. I'm here to tell you that God is going to give you sudden good breaks that are already in the atmosphere that God is already preparing for your life. Somebody clap your hands and shout. Come on, shout a little bit. So watch this. Many times God gives a sudden good break on a common day. Common means ordinary, unexpected. There was a day that there was a wedding and Jesus was there. He had not performed his first miracle yet and he didn't even have all 12 disciples. And Jesus was at the wedding and all of a sudden they said, Jesus, there's no more wine. And um, he says, why do you involve me with this? And then all of a sudden, Jesus' mother, Mary, comes to him and says, Jesus, there's no more wine. Uh, can you help? And he says, he says, woman, why are you trying to involve me? My time has not yet come. In other words, it's not my time to be the miracle worker. I'm still in a place of preparation. So there are times that you are in a place of preparation. And God will come and say, okay, you're not preparing anymore. It's time to get up and get going. But God, you don't understand my daughter's acting up. It's okay. It's time to get up and it's time to get going. God, you don't understand we just came out of a recession. It doesn't matter. It's time to get up and it's time to get going. God, you don't understand I haven't lost the 13 pounds yet. It's time to get up and it's time to get going. So Jesus is at a wedding. Somebody say, common day. common day. Say common occurrence. Common. Say uncommon God. uncommon God. Okay, turn my mic way up. Say common day. Common, day. common, occurrence. common occurrence. Say uncommon God. uncommon God. I'm here to tell you right now, on a common day this month, an uncommon occurrence is going to hit your life and change you because that's how God works. God sees the end from the beginning and he orchestrates where breaks are needed. Is there anybody besides me that has felt like you needed a break but you didn't see the break coming and then somehow the break came? Clap your hands like somehow the break came. So Jesus is at the wedding. His mother comes up and says, Jesus, we, 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 we have to disturb you. There's no more wine. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, get me those containers. They get the containers that are full of water, and all of a sudden, the water turns to wine. It's the first recorded miracle of Jesus. I want you to hear me. Unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick, but a sudden good break can turn. Can turn. What do you see for my life, Tim Story? God's about to turn things around. God's going to turn businesses around, families around, mindsets around. He could turn a nation around. He could turn, come on, somebody, a world around. You should clap your hands real strong like God can turn things around. Unrelenting disappointment 
can make you heart sick. I like this movie recently about Michael Jordan, and it shows the role that his mother played. His mother is a church lady, and so she knew she had a son that played great basketball. He played at the University of North Carolina for the Tar Heels. And when Nike came to him to talk to him about his shoe deal, if you remember from the movie, it was the mother who was negotiating. Because they were in a family that was lower income. But she had felt from God that that's not where they were going to stay. So Phil Knight came from Nike trying to offer her less than what she saw, and she refused to take it. I'm here to tell you, don't receive in life less than what you have seen. God has a life for you that is at a whole other level. Somebody clap your hands and shout. The Bible says, for I hath not seen, ear hath not even heard, neither has it even entered the heart of those that love God, what he has prepared for you. Watch. God has a this life, and disappointment is trying to take you to a here life. It was a common day. It was a common occurrence. But there was an uncommon God. I shared that story with you recently, but some of you were not here. As I was walking out of a Laker game, the L.A. Lakers, and I was walking with my son Isaiah, and Joseph was with me. And I saw a lady with a walker. Watch. She's walking with a walker. Watch. She's walking with a walker. And I said to my son, I said, Isaiah, I'm going to get that lady healed. He said, do you know her? I said, no. He said, but I'm, I said, I'm going to get her healed. And he said, Dad, don't embarrass us. Because here's a lady. Watch. 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 She's walking with the walker. Watch. But behind her is a man of God that has heard from God. So the miracle is about to sneak up on her. I'm here to tell you, miracles are about to sneak up on you. So watch. So she's walking with the walker. Watch. She's walking with the walker. So I come up to her and I said, I said, miss, how are you doing? I said, could you imagine, look at the Lakers. Did you see the comeback they had this, this season? I said, can you imagine? They came back. She said, oh, that was such a good game. And I said, miss, I said, have you ever seen my face before? And she said, no. Because I was hoping that she would say, yes, you're Tim's story. You're awesome. Because otherwise, how was I going to do this miracle? Because I felt God say, the lady's going to get healed. I should at least know the lady. So I said, have you ever seen my face before? She says, no. I said, miss, this is a strange thing. You've got to understand, there's hundreds of people coming out of the Laker game. A sudden good break can turn your life around. I said, a sudden good break can turn your life around. I said, a sudden good break can turn your life around. A sudden good break is about to hit this lady, but she did not even see it coming. Now watch. So I said, miss, this is a little bit strange. I said, but my name is Tim Story, and I go around the world and I speak. I said, I've been to 78 countries. She said, good for you. <laughs> I said, I'm going to pray for you. And I either asked Joseph or Isaiah, Joseph, who held the stick? I give the stick to Joseph. I said, here's, here's this. I said, just trust me. You're going to get healed. Just trust me. She, so she's looking at me like, I don't trust you. <laughs> Seriously, how can you trust a stranger, right? You've gone to the doctor and you still walk like this. Look, look, look. You've gone to therapy and you still walk this way. And here comes a Smokey Robinson lookalike. It says, don't worry, miss, you're about to get your miracle. See, unrelenting disappointment can leave you heart sick. See, when you are sick, it is a perspective that you take on. See, watch. When you're depressed, you go into a mood. 
When you're down, look at me, you go into a mood. When you're, when you're not feeling well, you go into a mood. She had gone into the mood that this is my life. But God said, no, that is not your life. I'm about to bring to you a sudden good break that will turn your life around. Clap real strong in this church. When it says sudden good break, it means God level of break. Someone's going to get a God level break. A God standard of break. Wow. You're not just going to barely get out of debt. Eh. You're going to. Stefan's book is not going to be kind of successful, it's going to be very successful. <laughs> this church is not going to help just a few people, we're going to help a lot of people. Come on, clap your hands. Your family is not going to be kind of blessed. They're going to be really blessed. Keep on clapping. You're not going to have a little impact. You're going to have maximum impact. Clap your hand like you're going to have maximized impact. But there are times where it looks like it's not working. This lady is ailing. She is walking sick, but something is coming behind her. Hey. So I said, Miss. God's going to heal you. Joseph here. In this moment, it's just faith. All I have is an African-American lady looking at, at me like, okay, little Smokey, you better have something here. I said, thank you, God, that you're here. Thank you that you're touching her. I said, okay, it worked. And she just looked at me. I said, go ahead and walk. And all of a sudden, Joseph was right there. Joseph's got the stick, and she just starts walking. And she starts just crying. And she, watch, watch, watch. She's walking, you guys. And she's, she's healed. And then she's healed. And then she's more healed. And then she's rejoicing. Right in the middle of the street. with hundreds of fans walking by. And then the awesome thing was for her to walk all the way to the car and then for her friend to greet her at the car and her friend to see what had happened. Did a sudden God kind of break changed her life. I was speaking in Sarabaya, Indonesia and there was a lot of people. We were in the stadium. There was a lot of people. And I was about to go to the left to go down. And I had all these bodyguards that, that were there. And I decided that God was speaking to me to go to the right. And so it was a big Morris Cirillo event. There was over 55,000 people there. I was the speaker that night. And so I told the bodyguards, I said, you guys, we're going that way. They said, no, 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 you're supposed to go this way because there are some threats that you get sometimes in big crowds. So I said, I'm going to go that way because I felt to go that way. And so while I went that way, I saw a lady watch me, and she was on a cardboard box, and she was squishing herself down the steps to get to her husband who was waiting for her with a, with a wheelbarrow. Are you with me? And then a friend was behind her, a lady was pushing her, and they were waiting, the husband was waiting with a wheelbarrow. And I was thinking, well, what is this sight? Because I had just been done teaching about faith, and God is awesome, and he's the God of miracles. So I feel like God said, okay, so you've been talking about how I'm the God of miracles. Now go down there and help that lady. Now, I didn't know there was a lady scooching down on a cardboard box until I saw her. So when I saw this lady coming down and her friend pushing her, and the husband's with a wheelbarrow, okay, Indonesia, I promise you, I look at her and something hit me. She's going to get healed. Well, I don't know her language, but I know the language of the Spirit. So I walked up to her, watch, and I stood like this in, she, in front of her face. And this time she recognized my face because she had been watching me for an hour straight. Watch, and she went. <laughs> and I went like this, like this, like you're gonna get up. And when I said like this, her eyes went. She grabbed my hand and she got straight up. 
No, no, watch. And I said, like, let's walk. She walked like this. So this has been my life since I was 20. This has been how I live. 78 countries of the world. Seen people that were stuck and then they were unstuck. Seen people that were caught and then God set them free. Seen people that on a common day they thought they were going to stay in the same state that they were in. But then I've seen a sudden good break turn. Look at me. Turn. Look at me. Turn their life around. You know what's about to happen to you? God is about to turn around areas of your life. And I close with this. For some, it's your finances. You better get ready because within two years, hey, God's going to take you to whole new dimensions. In your mindset, God's going to take you to whole different dimensions. In your health, God's going to take you to whole different dimensions. In your attitude, God's going to take you to whole different dimensions. Unrelenting disappointment maybe has left you heart sick, but a sudden good break will turn your life around. I'm done preaching. Somebody clap your hands if you're learning something today. Come on, stand up and clap real strong. So I know I need no music. We're okay on the music for a minute. We're okay on the music. Lift your hands towards heaven and just say, thank you, God, for everything you're doing in my life. Just say, you know what I need. Okay, then just you and him and all you that are watching at home, just you and him. Let God speak to you about a sudden good break in your life. Maybe you've had disappointment, a letdown, a loss, sorrow, but God is bringing a sudden good break. Maybe it's in your mindset. Maybe it's in your emotions. Maybe it's a healing you need in your body. God, we thank you for a sudden good break. Somebody say, God, you are. The God, the God of miracles. Say, come into my life, into my life. In, a new in a new and special way. way. Say, thank you for healing me. Thank you for changing me. Thank you for resurrecting me. Now just close your eyes for 30 seconds. Watch this power come. Thank you, God. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thine will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Father, we thank you for the call in our lives. Have your way in our lives. Let the Lord talk to you about the break that's coming right now. The break that's coming up behind you. The spiritual break, the mental break, the financial break, the family break. Speak to them, God, about the break. Whew. Jesus' name. Everybody look up here. How many of you honestly feel the presence of God in here? Okay, just lift your hands. How many believe this message that I just spoke? Clap your hands strong if you believe it. So I want to talk this through for 60 seconds. I want you to hear me. You could be seated so deep in the seat of disappointment. When my brother Randy died, Paige and I had a church meeting to go to just a few days after he had died. And we looked at each other like, oh, this is too much. Because our father had died, 
our sister had died and now our brother had died. Right, Paige? And we looked at each other like, now this is too much. We were, we were seated so deep in the seat of disappointment that life tries to say to you, that's the seat that you will always be in. Aren't you glad to see Pastor Paige with her cool hats and her cool clothes? Come on. Come on. Clap your hands. Looking 32 when she's only 37. Look at me. Paige, you could have been sitting in the seat of disappointment. First my father dies. Then my own sister dies. Who used to live with? You used to live with Viola. And now my brother passes. We looked at each other. We, had, we looked at each other. But we didn't look at each other like, let's give up. We looked at each other like, somehow, come on. Let's get up. Let's go. Let's get through. I'm here to tell you, God is going to make a way where there seemed to be no way. Is there anybody that needed to hear this message today that God's going to take you beyond disappointment? But watch, it's beyond disappointment into divine destiny. So what you see in Tim's story, how are you doing, Tim's story? Thank you very much. I'm living in my divine destiny. Past disappointment into divine destiny. Do not think anything lower than God taking you to the divine destiny. Raise your right hand. Say, I'm going there. Say, I'm going there. I'm going there. You're going, look at me. You're going, Jim Rojas, to the divine destiny. Even in the midst of disappointment, yes, God says there will be disappointment. He says in my notes, in this life there will be trials of many kinds, but don't give in. I've been through it myself. You're going to be okay. You're going to get to the divine destiny because I am the author and the finisher. I am the finisher. That's Hebrews chapter 12. I am the finisher. Clap your hands like God is the finisher. <laughs> Keep on clapping. He's the finisher. But I'm disappointed. You're disappointed now. But there's a miracle walking behind you. The lady at the Laker game never saw Tim's story was creeping up on her. Hey, come on, people. There's a miracle creeping up on you. There's a breakthrough. There's a break. Watch. Breakthrough. Not break sit. Not break stand. Break through. You have to have the effort to go through. The enemy has tried to steal your energy so you can't come through. I'm, I'm too hurt. Break through. I'm in pain. Break through. Carl hurt me. Break through. Come on, somebody. My mother's done it again. Break through. Who's going to be the president? Break through. A sudden good break. God kind of break. We'll turn. Powerful stuff, huh? Clap real loud. Come on. Come on, keep clapping in this place. He's awesome. That's why I never give up on anybody, even if they're dead. It's the truth. I go to hospitals sometimes, and the person has already died. And I'll say, keep them there. Jesus raised some people from the dead. Keep them there. I'm not even joking. I've been called on the phone to people's houses after they were dead. And I said, keep them there. 
And the LAPD, I walked into one place and the, and the police officer recognized me. Oh my God, Tim Story. They said, you wanted to keep the body. Yeah, keep the body there. I never give up on anybody, even if they're dead. Because he says he's a resurrector. No, no, these are true stories. He's a resurrector. God is going to resurrect dead things in your life. Some of you are going to start laughing again. Look at me. Some of you are going to see you smile again. Some of you are going to get cute again. Look at me. Some of you, your hair is going to start growing out of nowhere. Clap your hands again. Come on. We're done. Okay. Everyone stay standing. We're going to take the tithe and the offering, which look at me. You guys here at the church, you guys are awesome at this. And so I want to give you a scripture, okay? Stay standing. Somebody say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Say, do not lean on your own understanding. Say, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So I want you to look at me. In this life, man, we got to have faith in God. Just lift your hands if that's true. We got to have faith in God. The Bible says, give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. The Bible says that you reap what you what sow. And the Bible also says that if you sow, 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 you shall reap, reap, reap. So in today's offering, we're going to sow into our March and our April of this year. How many are believing for a great March and a great April? Just lift your hands, okay? Clap your hands like you're believing for that, okay? So Pastor Stephon, I'm going to have you come and stand with me. And everyone stay standing. He's going to give you the various ways that you can give. But here's what I'm going to challenge you. Some of you that are used to giving at a small level, I want you to step it up to a higher level of faith, okay? Some of you that are watching online that are not used to giving, I want you to give in a very special way because then you're helping us to speak the gospel, to teach the Bible to people all over the world. We have people all over the world watching right now and will watch later this week, okay? So what you become is a sponsor of somebody else's change. I want you to say this. Say, I am a sponsor for change. Okay, Pastor Stefan, various ways to give. Yeah, so there's a couple ways to give. The first way to give is through this offering envelope. So if you need one, uh, just raise your hand and one of our ushers uh, on the sides I will give it to you. Uh, on there, there's And you this, guys can sit down. There's a QR code um, that you can use. Other ways to give for those of you who are watching online or if you're like me, you do everything on your phone, uh, text Congregation Church uh, to 77977. Uh, super simple. You can also visit congregation.family slash give. Again, for those of you who are watching online. Uh, and also you can download the Congregation Family app um, as well. And so, uh, yeah, text, super simple. Uh, also, you can set up reoccurring giving. That's something that my wife and I do. We give regularly to the church in the form of a tithe. Uh, and uh, everything we do is reoccurring. We do it automatic. And so uh, if you're saying, hey, Stefan, how do I reoccur give? Uh, right when you text the code, uh, you can make a choice. You can give one time, uh, or uh, you can just set up reoccurring giving on your phone. So super, super simple. I see a lot of you texting, a lot of you writing. Just take another and thank you seconds. guys for being so faithful, mostly at this church. Tell them about the faithfulness of the people that come to this church. Yeah, we have, at the congregation family, we have a really high percentage of giving. And so, uh, you know, I th one of the things that we really believe is, is that uh, when, all, when all of us give together, amazing things happen. And so we are so thankful for every person who's a part of the giving family, uh, who regularly gives and, uh, and allows us to achieve the mission and vision of this church that God has given us. I love this. Yeah. One takeaway as the people are giving online and giving here in person, one takeaway that you got from today's message. I got a lot. I actually took notes today. One of the things that I love that you said uh, is that if, I love this, a break, breaks come in waves. So you they get a break in waves, and yes. then another break. 
Uh, and then they add up to a breakthrough, and there's other people who can break out mm -hmm. because you're breakthrough, which I love that so much. Is yeah. that I think that, that what I learned from that is that I think the things that God blesses us with, yes. he invests in us so that we can be the change in someone else's life. I love that. And see, the thing is, if you give up before your breakthrough, yeah. then other people may not break out. 100%. And again, you might be six years of age, seven years of age, 80 years, and you're saying, I give up now. I'm done. God is not done. You still could have the breakthrough so other people could have the break out. Clap your hands if you believe that's true. Okay. Uh, Callie, what song are you thinking of doing? Make a way. Okay, I love that. All right. So you guys continue to give. For those that have given already and for those that are about to give, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. We may not be what we want to be, but thank you, God, we're not what we used to be. 